this video will cover the shuttering used on the Sony RX10-2 and specifically provide some additional clarification to what is referred to as the anti-distortion shutter. That is one selling point that Sony uh, talks about with this camera, but they don't really provide a lot of clarity. So this will um, clarify that and give you the shuttering give you details on the shuttering used for video and also for uh, still images. One of the important things to understand about shuttering in cameras, especially CMOS cameras, is the distinction between a global shutter and a, a rolling shutter. Rolling shutters tend to provide some distortion and rolling shutter is basically says that the sensor is not all shuttered at the same time that the top line of the shutter is or the top line of the image is typically shuttered uh, before the uh, bottom line of the image and uh, subsequent um, lines all the way across so the the shuttering um, goes as or as a progression from top to bottom and there's a time time frame that, that's associated with that uh, what is shown here is a, a little test fixture that's used to uh, test for rolling shutter and gives you an idea what um, and it, it's used to actually quantify that and will also give you a visual um, feel for what a rolling shutter looks like. As you can see here, the, uh, the fixture has a vertical line. I'm here with my finger moving this vertical line back and forth. This is actually generated by putting a, a foam block on top of a fan that's lying on its side. And as you can see, this line is allowed to rotate. That fan can be turned on and actually create a, a vertical line that is moving from side to side. It's actually rotating around, but we're looking through a little window here that allows us to see that vertical line. The you can see there are gradations on top and bottom. Right now, this vertical line is pretty well lined up. You can see the little yellow marks to indicate um, the marks that are associated with each other and with the, um, with the uh, in this neutral position, you can see that the, that the um, alignment is pretty good. There's about a about a third of a division um, offset in this fixture from the top to the bottom, which is not caused by a vertical shutter, but just caused by the assembly error when I put this together. When we start to spin this, what you can see is that the that vertical line becomes a slanted line, and if we actually take a a, a snapshot of that, we can see that the we can see that the uh, vertical line is um, very slanted, and that's actually just caused be because the this is moving to left to right in this image, and that since the top of the image is taken before the bottom of the image, you can see that the uh, that line is taken at a uh, difference in time, and so that line is has moved a move from left to right, um, and so therefore it gives the appearance of a of a slanted line. So this is what a rolling shutter does and by using this mechanism we can we can quantify what the rolling shutter is and we can take measurements and uh, this is actually a fairly reasonable way to measure this and also to demonstrate this phenomenon. The other things that uh, so this is a, a very specific test for figuring out about rolling shutters. The in the Sony literature, they they show or they talk about their anti-distortion shutter and their example that they give, they talk about minimizing uh, image distortion. And the examples they give are, is a golfer. And for the same reason that the rolling shutter distorts that or, or vertical line, it can distort other objects such as a golf club when one is swinging a golf club. And as you can see by this picture, this is taken with a, a snapshot from actually the 4K uh, video mode of this camera. 
And as you can see, the um, the golf club looks rather distorted. There's a there's quite a bend in the golf club, and that is not caused by the dynamics of the of the golf club or the swinging. That is actually caused by this roller roll and shutter phenomenon because the club head is actually moving rapidly. This is a reasonably good golfer who can hit drives in the 200 to 250 yard range and his club head speed is probably somewhere around 100 miles an hour so the um, because the club head is actually shuttered or the image of the club head is taken after the image of the hands what happens is that club head is actually moved forward so that it appears the club is actually very bent but it's not really it's only uh, bent because of this roller shutter effect. If this is um, taken, if this same type of image is taken with the with a global shutter, you can see here that you actually get a an image that is much less distorted. And that's basically the, the and this image here uh, was actually taken with the mechanical shutter of the. RX10-2, and the mechanical shutter is is produces a global shutter, and a global shutter basically says that the whole sensor is exposed at the same time. Now the limitations of the global shutter in this camera are, and on many cameras, is the fact that the um, that there's a limited speed, namely the fastest or the smallest shuttering time that's possible with this global shutter, mechanical shutter, is 32 hundredths of a second. At max uh, aperture, then I believe the uh, maximum or the fastest shutter speed you can achieve is a sixteenth of a um, sixteen hundredth of a second. But uh, as you can see here, the the club looks uh, relatively straight, and so the this is what you this is what's really going on if you were to take the image all at the same time. Now, uh, what we we'll see here is that when we take a still image with the electronic shutter for this camera, we still see the distortion from a roller shutter, but we can see that the distortion is quite a bit less than the previous um, image that we showed. With when we took a still frame off the 4K, off a 4K video with this camera, the delay in the 4K video is approximately 1 60th of a second, a little less than that. And when we take this video, or not this video, but the still image, still image, which is the 20 meg image, we find that the um, that the delay between the top and the bottom. Um, lines of the sensor is approximately 101 over 120th of a second, a little, little faster than that it looks like from, from our measurements. So uh, this is what I believe is considered the anti-distortion shutter for this camera, namely it's a fairly fast rolling shutter that they use for this still image. And most cameras, or I shouldn't Maybe I shouldn't say most cameras, but many CMOS cameras don't have the option to use an electronic shutter. That was one of the new features of this of this camera was to allow one to use an electronic shutter that allowed much higher shutter speeds. So this was actually taken at I believe a um, one thirty um, two thousandth of a second is the fastest you can do with a still image. So you can get a much faster shutter speed with the with this camera than you uh, typically could because you can use an electronic shutter, but the only downside to that is that you end up, it still takes an image with a rolling shutter type um, mechanization, though the mechanization is actually quite fast. So one of the things that, um, that um, Sony may be pointing out here is that their uh, electronic configuration for their still image is faster than other cameras. Don't, I haven't tested other cameras, but that certainly is a possible selling point for this. So by allowing you to use the electronic shutter in still images, it allows you to use a much faster shutter speed 
though the downside is that you have a um, is that it produces a rolling shutter but the good news is that the that the rolling shutter is actually fairly uh, fairly fast I use the golf example here because it's the same example that uh, Sony has used in their website when they talked about the uh, the anti-distortion shutter and one unfortunate um, note here is that the example that Sony has shown is is actually it looks to be incorrect. They show uh, basically a, um, what a, the golfer example, and they show that uh, other cameras uh, cause a large distortion, something that actually was larger than what was um, shown by the by the um, single frame from the 4K video that I showed previously with a large distorted club. Uh, shaft, and then they show a picture that looks like a global shutter is used for the uh, for the RX10-2 with a one thirty-two thousandth of a second shutter, and it looks like it's um, basically shows no distortion at all. And from this picture here, you can see that the that in still images using the electronic shutter. There is definitely still a distortion, though it's small. They should have uh, shown a, a picture more like this that actually shows that the uh, that there is distortion. So I'm not sure why they did that, but I wanted to point this out because their web page would indicate that the that their uh, anti-distortion shutter really doesn't produce any distortion, and in reality, it it uh, show, shows some notable distortion, though. One has to admit that it's uh, quite an accomplishment in order to be able to uh, capture the image um, with almost 4,000 lines in approximately 1 over 120th, a little, little smaller than that, of a second. That is certainly indicating that they're doing some very fast processing, but it is misleading in my, in my opinion that they showed a, um, a golfer with a club head that is um, basically shows no distortion in here. With a reasonable golfer, you certainly see distortion. And their example for um, their comparison was actually a, a a club head that showed quite a bit of distortion. So perhaps their competitor um, is that is quite a bit worse than this. And uh, so I'm not sure why they did that. But anyway, this is the this is what I get with a with a typical um, fairly decent golfer and it shows that there is distortion and what I've done here is just actually quantified it. It's, there's um, approximately 1 over a, a 120th, a little little less than that of a second uh, difference between the top of the, when the top of the image is shuttered in still image mode using the electronic shutter and when the bottom line of the image is shuttered. So I would have preferred them just to quantify that as opposed to give what I think is misleading pictures. In addition to the uh, rolling shutter effect for the still images, we've also measured the a rolling shutter effect for the video modes. And in most cases, the rolling shutter effect is basically just one over the frame rate, namely for 60 uh, frames a second. The delay between taking the top line and the bottom line is approximately a 60th of a second, slightly less than that. And uh, that go that trend continues with the 120 uh, frames a second, 100, uh, 240, uh, 480, and 960. 960 we can't quantify that particularly exactly. Where the measurement error for this is probably something uh, like a half a millisecond, probably a little less than that, but there it becomes a little coarser, but that trend seems to hold. So I think that would be a pretty good assumption that the roller shutter effect for, for 960 is around uh, one over 960, a little less than that. Uh, the one exception to this general rule is that for the 4K, uh, for the 4K video, the, um, the roller shutter effect is actually only a 60th of a second, even though the uh, frame rate on that is 30 frames a second.